good evening again. It's Wednesday. The only sad part is I'm standing in an empty church again tonight. It's about five weeks now that we've not been able to have our midweek prayer and Bible study together and our children's classes, our teenagers, as well as our young adults, but we're soon to be back together, I believe, and I don't know exactly when that's going to happen, but uh, we're trusting to be able to be back together uh, pretty soon, or at least we hope we'll be back together uh, pretty soon. Uh, we're going to follow all the guidelines and uh, obey our governor's orders uh, not to assemble as long as uh, he puts those mandates in place. Uh, I, I'm a one that I believe we should obey our government, and that's what we're going to do, and that's why we're not having church. Now, if the governor or the, anyone else would come out and say, we can't meet because of we're meeting in the name of Christ, well, then I'd have to break the law. But as long as uh, it's because of uh, our safety and health concerns and protection, uh, I'm going to follow their rules. It is good to be able to wave at you and, and be able to speak briefly on Sunday mornings when we come together. But let's just be honest with each other. That's just not the same as coming together. I was talking to someone today that on the phone and said, it's just not like coming into the house of God and being able to see one another and fellowship and shake hands and hug and, and just be able to spend time together. And I agree with that. Uh, this has been hard on me. I'm, I'm not complaining. I'm not looking for any sympathy. Uh, but it's hard to teach and preach to an iPad on Wednesday nights and on Sunday evenings. It, it's, it's even difficult for me to stand on the little patio and preach on Sunday mornings. I don't get to see your faces. All I see is a bunch of cars. I, I seldom hear an amen because that just that doesn't carry. I can't hear your beautiful voices singing as you lift your voices and hearts to God as you sing. And uh, But we'll get through this. I've told you that from day one. We'll get through this, and it'll, it'll be just fine. I do have some exciting news to tell you tonight, and I briefly mentioned some of this Sunday morning, but for those of you that weren't on the parking lot, uh, with our shutdown of our building, I'm preaching a series of sermons on Sunday morning. I began Sunday on what kind of church I would like to be a part of. And we're looking at Acts chapter 2. And I encourage you, if you have not saw the videos, to, or the video, I should say, please go back and, and watch it. I'll be doing part two, Lord willing, this Sunday. Uh, but, and in that, but anyways, in that message I said, the church is not closed because we're the church. Uh, the building is all that's closed. And because our building's been closed, it's given us an opportunity to do some things that's needed to be done. And for all of those, and I'll, I'll not mention any names, because uh, number one, I wouldn't want to embarrass them, but number two, I would probably forget someone. But uh, over the course of the last several weeks, our buildings have totally, be, have totally been disinfected uh, from the light switches, the doorknobs, the push bars, uh, the bathrooms, the, the doors, everything in the building's been disinfected. Uh, the entire building has, uh, the carpets have all been shampooed with the exception of the sanctuary. Sanctuary will be done next week, Lord willing. And then I can say the entire building has been, uh, as far as the carpet's concerned, have been shampooed. Uh, the fellowship hall's been totally disinfected as well. Uh, a group of men were able to come in and do some needed repairs on the ceiling there in the sanctuary. And uh, then this week, uh, some men have been here a few nights uh, working on our baptistry. The paint on the baptistry tub has uh, been peeling, and it's been able to be scraped and, and, and uh, repainted and prepared for those that will be following Jesus in baptism in, in the near future, and I'm believing that. So some very needed uh, things, uh, improvements have been going on while you've been gone from the inside of the building, and uh, we just took advantage of that. On a sad note tonight, uh, at least it's sad to me, we learned on Monday that our National Association of Free Will Baptist Convention, scheduled for July uh, in Oklahoma City, uh, has been canceled this year. 
Uh, Oklahoma City authorities thought it best not to bring 5,000 plus people in for a week and, and certainly I agree with them and uh, I agree with our leadership of our National Association in making this decision. Uh, but because of this decision that means they'll not be any uh, competition going on to the national. No uh, uh, E-teams have been canceled. Uh, yet teams have been canceled. Uh, all the vertical three competitions and so forth has, has gone away for this year. And so we'll not have anything like that until 2021. And I looked it up this afternoon. We'll be going to Memphis, Tennessee in 2021. So we hope you'll uh, be planning to, to join us there uh, at our national convention and be working towards that as far as our vertical three coaches and, and competitors uh, for that event. I have talked to Brother Jason since uh, Monday evening, or on Monday evening, I talked to him. And uh, due to the nearness, even if our state is open back up within the next week or two, we feel at this time it is uh, just too close uh, to have our scheduled yard sale. Uh, you know, every end of the May and the first part of uh, June, we always have our annual yard sale, which the proceeds help in the uh, funding of our Vertical 3 conference. And so we've not canceled it. Uh, we have just simply postponed it. And so uh, I was looking at the calendar this morning. It looks like our best opportunity will be sometime in September. Uh, but Brother Jason and I will be looking at the calendar along with some of our volunteers that oversee our yard sale. And we'll let you know. For, so for now, if you'll just hang on to those items that you had planned on donating in a couple of weeks, if you'll just hold on to them through the summer, uh, we certainly hope to have uh, that yard sale come September. There has been some questions about, well, what will happen to the money that's already been raised for this year? That money, my friends, is designated money. That money will be left in the Vertical 3 competition fund uh, to be used next year. And so that money will just roll over till next year. And uh, so it's not, uh, it won't be dumped in the general fund for general use that money goes where it belongs, and that's with our Vertical 3 competition. Uh, also, I've been asked about Vacation Bible School. Uh, Brother Jason and I have talked about that as well. That is the third week in June, and as of right now, we plan on to have Vacation Bible School. And so uh, we'll keep you updated on that, because uh, that's a little ways away, but preparations are being made and we do plan on having Vacation Bible School. Well, let me get right into the uh, lesson tonight because I don't want to keep you forever and a day uh, making announcements and so forth, but I just like to keep you updated on things that are going on. We continue tonight with lesson number eight in the Red Sea Rules by Robert Morgan. Uh, in lesson, uh, in this book, I'm, I'm sorry, in this book we're looking at 10 God-given principles or strategies to overcome life's difficulties. Uh, you're human just like I am, and life does deal us some difficulties once in a while. And so uh, we're looking at these, uh, these uh, strategies, uh, these strategies for overcoming life's difficulties, and we're up to number eight. They come from Exodus chapter 14 as we're uh, dealing with the children of Israel crossing the Red Sea. And tonight, if you have your Bibles in front of you, we're down to verses 21 and 22 will be the two verses that we look at this evening. Uh, Exodus 14, verses 21 and 22. Let me read them to you, and then I'll get right into my comments. Verse 21 says... And well, let me let me set this up before I read verse 21. The children of Israel are now at the edge of the Red Sea. They have the, the Red Sea in front of them. They have the mountains around them. And they have Pharaoh and the Egyptians behind them, uh, chasing them. It looks like they're in a predicament, and certainly they are. And uh, they, they have no way of escape. God has got to get them out of this most difficult situation of their lives. Tonight, that's going to, part of that's going to happen. Look now at verse 21. Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the Lord caused the sea to go back by a strong east wind all that night and made the sea dry land, and the waters were divided. 
And the children of Israel went into the midst of the sea upon the dry ground, and the waters were a wall unto them on their right hand and on their left. Tonight I'm coming to you from the primary Sunday school class. That would be grades one through three here at Sherwood Forest. And uh, I was walking down the hall today, and on my way back uh, down the hall, I, I glanced into this room. And uh, just uh, I was just looking to see what was going on. Nothing was going on. I just happened to look in here. And I didn't really know where I was going to go to uh, tape our session tonight. And when I looked into this primary classroom, and, and on my screen, they're backwards. I don't know what they look like on your screen, but I noticed these two color sheets that our teacher, Miss Lisa Rice, had uh, taken her students through, and uh, two of them ended up on the board. Uh, these two uh, color sheets says God is in control. And that, cat, that caught my attention. And I wanted to say to you tonight, God is in control. God still is in control. God always has been in control. In our lesson this evening from Exodus 14, we find the Israelites watching, uh, probably in disbelief, but they were watching Moses as he lifted his rod and stretched it towards and over the Red Sea. The Bible says that an eastern wind came that night and hovered over the Red Sea and blew all night, and the waters parted and the ground dried up. You remember flannel graphs from back in the day? I remember a flannel graph of, the, uh, of this Red Sea uh, story where it showed the, uh, the, the sea walls being up on the left and on the right, but there were little puddles with fish flopping around in them as the children of Israel crossed uh, uh, the, the, the dry ground. I'm not so sure the, the uh, publishers of Flannel Graph really got that right, because if you'll notice in our passage twice, both in verse 21 as well as in verse 22, it uses the phrase dry ground. I believe this eastern wind that came through totally dried up that ground that night that the children of Israel walked across. and They didn't have to dodge mud puddles or anything else. It was simply perfectly dry ground as they walked across. This picture in verses 20 and 21 uh, can be looked at it two ways. Number one, it, it is a gateway for the Israelites to their freedom, to their delivery from life's problems. It was a gateway. But for Pharaoh and his army, it was a graveyard. We will see later in this chapter where the Egyptians, those walls of water, fell in and every one of them drowned. You ever thought about the word deliver? The, the title of our lesson tonight, as Rob Morgan puts it in his book, is we're to trust God to deliver in his own unique way. We're to trust God to deliver in his own unique way. The word that stuck out to me in, in this uh, uh, part of the book was the word deliver. Rob Morgan uses many scriptures in his book that uses the word deliver to describe how God will deliver us and how he delivers us in his unique way. Let me just point a couple of those verses out to you uh, tonight. In Deuteronomy chapter 23, verse number 14, the Bible says, God walks in your midst to deliver you. You realize tonight, church, God's walking with you? He's walking in our midst. When we feel lonely, when we feel discouraged, when we feel depressed, God's always there. I spoke to you about that briefly on Sunday night, how God is in our midst. In Psalm 34, verse 19, David says, Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord, but the Lord delivers him out of all of them. I submit to you tonight, we're going through an affliction. Some of you are going through more than just one affliction. But I submit to you, the fact is, God will deliver us from these afflictions. 
And I'm going to say more about that as the lesson progresses, so I'm, I'll just hush right here and not get ahead of myself. But the simple fact, I want you to remember Psalm 34, 19. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them. In 2 Peter chapter 2, verse number 9, the Bible says, The Lord knows how to deliver the godly out of temptations. Galatians 1, 4, Christ gave himself for our sins that he might deliver us. Listen, the greatest deliverance you and I have is the deliverance from our sins. God saved us. He went to the cross. A few weeks ago, we celebrated as we looked at the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. Jesus went to the cross that he might deliver us from one of life's most difficulties. And that is from our sin. Psalmist says in Psalm 50, verse 15, Call upon me in the day of trouble, and I will deliver you, and you shall glorify me. Now, if we were together tonight and we, we were delivering this message to you and you were in the sanctuary with me, I'd ask you, do you believe God still delivers folks today? Do you still believe God performs miracles today? And then I would stop and I would wait for you to respond. You may respond on the, on the Facebook by clicking like or love. Or, or if you don't believe it, to click a sad face or, or that angry face. Or you may even comment in the comments uh, there uh, in the, on the Facebook. But do you believe? Do you believe God still delivers? And do you believe God still performs miracles today? And I'm going to give you the answer. And I'm seeing some of you post and some of you clicking on things. Here's the answer. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. God absolutely still delivers people today. Are you saying to me, preacher, God can deliver me of my financial problems? God can deliver through uh, marital problems. God will deliver uh, when we're in situations of harm. God can deliver when we're discouraged. God can deliver when we're depressed. God can deliver when we're in danger. God can deliver when we're going through a physical disease. Do you really believe that, preacher? Not only do I believe it, my friends, but I've witnessed it. Absolutely, God still delivers. And he delivers in his own unique way. You see, you're a unique individual. God's made you different than anybody else. I'm different than anybody else. And God chooses to deliver me differently than he chooses to deliver you. But I submit to you, God always delivers his people. Rob Morgan gives several examples in his little book, and uh, one of them really touched my heart. And if you have the little book, I'd encourage you to read those examples. Uh, but let me give you just this one, just this one. It's uh, about a lady by the name of Christine Claypool. Christine Claypool is from the Kirby Free Will Baptist Church in Detroit, Michigan. She was on a mission trip to Cuba wanting to take Spanish Bibles to the community of Christians there, Christian, uh, Christine, I'm sorry, Christine wore several layers of clothing to conserve space in her suitcase for the Bibles. But her odd appearance drew the attention of the security agents at every airport. Christine had to open her suitcase at her departure city and then again in Bahamas. Arriving in Cuba, she was alarmed to again to be singled out and ordered to open her suitcase. But the zipper wouldn't bulge. It would not budge. She could not open it, but only about two inches. She fought with it until, at length, the guard impatiently took over the struggle. Despite prolonged efforts, the zipper would not budge. Christine was perplexed for it was a brand new suitcase and had been opened several times before in, in, expiration, or in exasperation. The guard finally shoved it toward her and told her to go on. Arriving at her hotel, Christine looked for a knife to cut open her luggage, but when she gave the zipper a tug, it opened easily, and the Bibles, the Bibles were distributed as planned. Do 
you think God had a hand in that? I certainly believe he did. I believe God knew those Bibles needed to get into Cuba. And God delivered Christine to the fact that she could get those Bibles there. Rob Morgan says in his book, many times, God's deliverance is mysterious. Sometimes it's miraculous. And other times it's providential. All three of these can be found in Hebrews chapter 11. That great faith chapter. How God, one after the other after the other, delivered his people. And you've heard me say this before, and I'll say it to you again tonight. As, as, as God delivered those folks in Hebrews chapter 11, you read name after name after name. But what gets my attention is when we get down to verse 35. And as you read in verse 35, the middle of verse 35, through verse 38, I want you to notice this. And others were tortured not accepting deliverance, that they might obtain a better resurrection. And others had trial of cruel mockings and scourgings, yea, moreover of bonds and imprisonment. They were stoned, they were sawed asunder, were tempted, were slain with the sword. They wandered about in sheepskins and goatskins, being destitute, afflicted, tormented, of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in deserts and in mountains and in dens and in the caves of the earth. Now here's why that strikes me. Because in all the names that are listed in Hebrews 11, when we get down there to verse 35, there's others that weren't delivered. Oh, but wait, <laughs> were they? <laughs> yeah, they were. They were delivered in a different way than what the others in Hebrews 11 were delivered. You see, God sometimes delivers in a different manner than what we would think of. Church, I want to remind you, and I've, I've mentioned this many times in this series of lessons, that the simple fact is God delivers in different ways because God is different than you and I. If you've not written this verse down or if you've not underlined it in your Bible or highlighted it in your Bible, you need to. It's Isaiah 55, 8. Isaiah 55, 8. God says, My thoughts are not your thoughts, nor your ways my ways. And see, the way we think we ought to be delivered, the way that we think in our finite minds, has nothing to do with the way God may work things out and the way God thinks. I'm reminded of the Apostle Paul. The Apostle Paul was in prison when he wrote the book of 2 Timothy. He was about to give his life. He was about to die. And, and, and I'm, I'm fascinated to the fact that, you know, we, we always go to those verses where Paul says, I fought a good fight, I kept the faith. Henceforth is laid up for me a treasure in heaven. But today my mind went to 2 Timothy 4.18. In 2 Timothy 4.18, Paul says, The Lord will deliver me. Listen now. The Lord will deliver me from every evil work and preserve me for his heavenly kingdom. Were those just words of the Apostle Paul? Was he just writing something that sounded really good to Timothy, a young preacher in the ministry? Or did Paul really believe this in his heart that God was going to deliver him? I, I, I tend to believe the second part. I, I tend to believe God that uh, Timothy, or not Timothy, but Paul, really wrote to Timothy believing that God was going to deliver him. Was he going to deliver him from prison? I don't know. Could he have? Sure. Sure, he could have delivered Paul from prison. But I submit to you, shortly after Paul wrote 2 Timothy 4, 18, just a few days later, Paul was beheaded. He was murdered. He was killed. He was assassinated or, or put to death. His body was thrown in a grave. And the stories that I've read is that when they threw his body in the grave, they took his head and threw it in there on top of his body. And they covered him up. And 
he was buried. Was he delivered? Yes. Yes, Paul was delivered. He was removed from the tears and the pain and the stress and the sickness of this world. He was delivered to go to heaven. He was delivered to a place where Satan could no longer bother him. And I submit to you tonight, some of the difficulties that you and I go through, God will see how to deliver in his unique own way. I guess the, the best example I could give you is there, there are those that we pray for that God would give them a physical healing in their bodies. And God doesn't choose to do that and they die. And we say, well, God did not deliver them. God did not heal them. I submit to you they got a healing way beyond what they could have gotten on this earth and that they were delivered. I read a story about Vance Havner. Vance Havner was a North Carolina evangelist who, not free will Baptist, obviously, but he lost his wife to a disease. He was very unhappy. It didn't seem anyone could comfort him. But in his journal, he wrote these words, days after his wife passed away. I want you to listen to these words. When before the throne we stand in him complete, all the riddles that puzzle us here will fall into place and we shall know in fulfillment what we now believe in faith, that all things work together for good and his eternal purpose. No longer will we cry, my God, why? But our alas will become alleluia. All question marks will be straightened into exclamation points. Our sorrow will be changed to singing and our pain will be lost in praise. I, I don't know who said it. I, I found it in a journal of mine that I was looking through the other day, and uh, I, I just jotted it down, but I didn't write a reference down. But I simply says uh, in my journal I'd written, God marks across some days. I will explain later. God marks across some of our days. I will explain later. Well, God will deliver you and I in his own unique way from life's difficulties. So let me, let me close by simply saying to you tonight, we can trust him. We can trust him to save us and secure us and protect us. We can, we can trust him to deliver us. And why do I say that? Because that's, our spe that's God's specialty. God's specialty. Rob, Rob Morgan ends his chapter uh, with a, a, a statement as he um, puts in his own words some of the things that we've tried to say tonight. And so I want to share that with you in, in our closing tonight. This is, this is a quote from Robert J. Morgan uh, from the book, The Red Sea Rules. When the children of Israel were trapped and afraid, twixt forbidding tides and Pharaoh's tired, Jehovah's, Jehovah commanded and Moses obeyed. As pitiful prayers filled an impossible place, as Moses gazed into Jehovah's dread face, as the people of God needed infinite grace, the mighty winds howled, violent waves dashed. The sea waters quivered and the lightnings flashed, the thunders boomed and the breakers crashed. And when the sun arose on that terrible day, the children of Israel, through the misty spray, discovered their God had made them away. And many a Christian in the years that have passed, through, though troubled by fears, though tried and harassed, have found the same God strong, sure, and steadfast. He'll do the same for you. Our God will deliver in a unique way because that's what he specializes in. 
Thank you, God, for your deliverance, first of all, from sin. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, who gave his life on Calvary, that we could be saved. Thank you for the free gift of salvation. And I pray tonight, giving you thanksgiving for those who are watching, that you've saved their souls. And for those that may watch or are watching that you've not saved yet, God, I pray that the Holy Spirit would speak to their hearts and that they would find time tonight to call out to the Lord Jesus to deliver them from their sin and create in them a new person and that Jesus would rule and reign on, in their heart as Lord and as Savior. Thank you for delivering in your unique ways through life's difficulties, and I know after five plus weeks of us being under these uh, uh, coronavirus uh, mandates of our government, uh, we, uh, we tend to uh, have uh, discouragement, perhaps depression, getting a little homebound and we we want to get back to some common kind of, some kind of normal life and in these times God Satan can mess with our minds and God get put thoughts there that don't need to be in our minds and we miss the fellowship and we we need that so drastically I, I sometimes believe God you brought this into our lives to to remind all of us how much we need one another and how much we need the church and how we cannot survive on our own. And so I pray you'd encourage those tonight that are listening, those that are watching, and God, that you would deliver them from whatever life situation that's dealing to them to this evening, that your Holy Spirit would go to them and you would minister as only you can. Speak peace and comfort and encouragement to our people this evening. Again, I pray that you would wipe this coronavirus out in a miraculous way. You would open our states back up in a safe way. And Lord, that you would continue to comfort and heal and protect all of us as we pray so many times throughout the day especially those that might be in harm's way this evening, those that are on the front lines dealing with this dreaded disease. Give leadership and wisdom from the White House all the way down to the city courthouses. And Lord, we'll look to you for guidance and for direction. Bless all the requests that we've heard of that's been texted to us or emailed to us. You know the hearts and the minds of your people, and we ask you to be with them and that you would answer in your time and in your way. Thank you for being a, a delivering God, as you reminded us tonight, as Moses lifted his rod across the Red Sea and it parted and made a way for the children of Israel to cross over into the promised land. We love you and thank you for all you do in Christ's name. Amen. Lord willing, we're going to see you Sunday morning, 1030, on the parking lot. Uh, that's weather permitting. Lord willing, I want you to come. Uh, thank you again for obeying the rules of uh, meeting together on Sundays and so that we can continue to do this through this pandemic. And so listen to our uh, ushers, our deacons, as they uh, park you on Sunday. And... Uh, Hopefully we'll be able to uh, meet together. I would encourage those that drive uh, vans or trucks, uh, if you would, uh, please try to park in the back of the parking lot so we can have the smaller cars towards the front so that we can uh, do the very best we can to see, uh, give the people opportunity to see uh, the stage from the, from the parking lot. Of course, there'll be opportunities for you to give your tithes and offerings as well. We'll be singing again Sunday uh, together, and appreciate Brother Mike helping us with the with the song services uh, of our of our time. And then, Lord willing, we'll be right. Of course, that but that service will also be on our Facebook page here. It'll be on our website as well as on YouTube. And so, please share. Please let people know that these encouraging words are out there. 
and uh, it might be a real blessing to them. Also then on Sunday evening at 6 o'clock, Lord Willem will be right back here on the, on the page uh, with uh, lesson number 9 of the Red Sea Rules, so plan to join us then. Until then, let me once again tell you, Preacher loves you. Uh, our family loves you. We miss you. Uh, we can't wait to join back together uh, and see one another and aggravate one another. And just, uh, be, it's a friendly aggravation, you understand. And uh, so we look forward to that time. Uh, in the meantime, if there's anything we might be able to do for you, don't, don't hesitate to call us. Don't hesitate to text or email and uh, we'll do the very best we can. We, we've been delivering groceries to some of our uh, elderly folks and, and uh, picking up prescriptions and just doing whatever we can do. And so uh, obviously we're doing it from a distance, but we're doing what we can do. So if we can be of any help, keep the prayer requests, praise items coming in so we'll know how to pray for you and what to praise the Lord with you for. I trust you'll have a great rest of this Wednesday evening and that the Lord will bless you with the rest of this week. Uh, stay safe, uh, stay, uh, stay healthy, and uh, the Lord bless you until we meet again. You have a good evening. We'll see you later.